Nestruck. In the past few weeks, I've posted part 5 of both the English-friendly Super Famicom games and the Super Famicom RPG series. That's a lot of games I've blathered about, so to make things a little simpler, I thought I'd make a list of the 13 best games that have never been released outside of Japan. So just so you know, I'm disqualifying stuff that has been released in other formats. For example, no Twin Bee Rainbow Bell Adventure since that's on the Europe Wii Virtual Console. No Tactics Ogre since that got released for PS1 and PSP in the US. No Mega Man and Base since that got released in North America on Game Boy Advance. You get what I mean. I think the games I picked all stayed in Japan, unless they were buried on some big collection package or something like that. Also, yeah, it'd be very easy to fill this entire list up with JRPGs, but I'm gonna try and stay away from that and make an effort to include some different genres. 13. Gunpuru Gunman's Proof is a top-down, adventure-style Zelda clone, but with more of a science fiction Wild West motif. This is a game you could play without an English patch, but it's actually a pretty funny game when it's translated, so you'd be missing out. This game is more action-oriented than puzzle-solving, and it plays a little like Zombies Ate My Neighbors in Zelda's clothing. If there's a flaw in this game, it's how slowly the screens load when moving from room to room, but other than that, this game is great fun that holds up really well today. 12. Magical Poppin is a very good platformer that's structured in a similar way to a game like Super Metroid. There's multiple paths you can explore with a new path opening up for each item or ability you obtain. So yeah, the replay value for this one is great. It's great for speedruns, 100% runs, however you want to approach it. The one drawback here is that there's no map, but still, this is a fun, open-ended platformer that's well worth your time. 11. Great Battle 4, a 2D side-scrolling action platformer where you play as SD versions of Gundam, Ultraman, and Kamen Rider. Each character has their own unique characteristic that you can use to get by each level, plus there's tons of overpowered weapons, big explosions, kick-ass music, and it's two-player co-op. If you like stuff like Mega Man X, then you gotta check this one out. Ten. Rendering Ranger R2. This game is freaking spectacular looking, and it's one of the better run and gun titles on the Super Nintendo, with the one caveat being that it's really, really hard. This game is worth the effort though, with side scrolling levels reminiscent of Super Turrican and horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up levels. But yeah, the main selling point here is how the game looks. There just aren't any other 16 bit games that have visuals or an atmosphere quite like this. Nine. Fire Emblem, Seisen no Keifu. Okay, technically I haven't gotten to the Fire Emblem games yet in any of my videos. There are three on the Super Famicom that never made it out of Japan. If anything, I hope to tackle these in the sixth edition of the Super Famicom RPG series, but the fourth Fire Emblem game, or the second Super Famicom Fire Emblem game, has really been a pleasure to play. A great blend of tactical gameplay and storytelling. It's a real shame this game never made it anywhere else. Eight. Macaross Scrambled Valkyrie. This is easily one of the four or five best shoot 'em ups on the Super Nintendo period, up there with stuff like Axelay, Space Megaforce, and UN Squadron. Three very different playable characters, all with different speeds and different weapons, but all have the ability to steal enemy ships and have them fight alongside you. The difficulty is tough, but forgiving and fair, so it's accessible to people even if you're not that high on shoot 'em ups. Seven. Gundam Wing Endless Duel is the complete package when it comes to fighting games. It's fast, it's smooth, it looks fantastic, and the fighting mechanics are reasonably easy to pick up. Yeah, this game gets pretty damn hard in story mode as the last few characters are absurdly difficult, but as a one-on-one -on -one versus fighting game against a friend, this game is tremendous fun. Six. Super Bomberman 5 is arguably the best Bomberman game ever since it has both the best single player campaign as well as the best multiplayer options available. There's 9 characters including a create a character mode, 10 maps, 3 more that can be unlocked, and all the greatness you've come to expect from 16-bit Super Bomberman except with this time having both a great single player and multiplayer mode. Five. Great Battle 5. Here's a game that combines the excellent action platforming of Great Battle 4 with a gallery shooter on par with Wild Guns. And yes, this game is two-player co-op. You just can't beat that. Even better, this is a game where you don't really need an English patch to progress. You can just plow right through, ignore the text, and enjoy the action. Sadly, this cartridge has become a bit pricey, but any way you're able to play Great Battle 5, do it. It's awesome. Four. Live a Live is one of my personal favorites I've discovered since I started this channel project thing. It's seven different storylines and seven different gameplay modes that you can play in any order, and they all cleverly come together at the end to form two more stories. In one story you're in feudal Japan, in another you're a professional wrestler, another you're a robot where there's no combat at all. This is one of the most innovative games I can remember playing. Definitely check this one out. Three. 
Ganbari Goemon Kirikiro Doshu, Bokuga Dancer Ninata Wake. Whew, that's a mouthful, but yeah, out of the three Legend of the Mystical Ninja sequels that never made it out of Japan, the fourth game here is the best. And this game is just, I don't even know where to begin with it. It's 24 megs, which is absolutely gigantic for a game that's not a role-playing game. That should tell you the huge amount of variety this game offers. There's so many different modes and mini-games, all while providing such fantastic visuals and a great soundtrack. The fourth Super Famicom Goemon game is almost overwhelming. It's definitely worth experiencing for yourself. True. Seiken Densetsu 3, another game with awesome visuals and a memorable soundtrack in addition to the addictive gameplay that Secret of Mana started, but Seiken Densetsu 3 improved upon. The top-down combat here is so much fun. I understand some people don't care for the story aspects here, but I have to respect the scope of this game. The sheer amount of paths and characters make this game gigantic, and the core gameplay is so good that it makes each path worthwhile so you get your money's worth. This game is great, but it's not quite as good as... One. Front Mission Gun Hazard. This game, to put it shortly, is the shit. It's the sequel to the original Front Mission for Super Famicom, but a lot less tactics-centric and much more streamlined to be an action-style role-playing game with a great, engaging story, spectacular-looking battles that let you use experience points to level up your mech unit or wanzer, and earn money so you can buy more weapons. And customizing these things and making stuff go boom is just so much fun. Also, the music here is composed by the dream team of Nobuo Oematsu, Masashi Hamauzu of Romancing Saga, and Yasunori Mitsu from Chrono Trigger. Front Mission Gun Hazard top to bottom is freaking awesome. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.